This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, it is now six o'clock and this is the regular meeting of the planning. Is that right here? How's this gonna work? Yeah. Just gonna turn them all on? We'll share. One, we'll share. one closest. Uh, this is the uh, October 24th, Tuesday, October 24th, regular meeting of the Roswell Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, appreciate everybody being here, all the people in the audience. And uh, we want to, those of you who haven't met, and we've met him, we have a new commissioner on board, Mr. Greg Holman, down here on the end. We, we either welcome him or give him our condolences. We're not sure yet. He's not sure yet. Uh, could we have a roll call vote for attendance, please? Yes, Chair Story. Chair Story. Oh, I thought you said yes, Chair Story. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, okay. Present. Commissioner Aguilar is absent. Commissioner McDaniel is absent. Commissioner Lassard. Present. Commissioner Henderson. Here. Commissioner Gutierrez. Here. Commissioner Holman. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. I guess we probably shouldn't have elected Saul as the co-chairman. He hadn't been here since then. <laughs> that's how he got elected. <laughs> yeah, that's how he got elected because he wasn't here. And then I guess it made him mad. So he said, well, I don't know if he's going to go. Um, Welcome. Come on in here, we'll make room for you. 6.02, maybe start at 6. Sorry. Okay. Oh, we elected you to a vote. Yeah. yeah. I was just it wasn't that, it wasn't that late. Oh my God. I just mentioned that once we elected Saul as coach. He hasn't, he hasn't been here. He hasn't he? been here he since. He said he had been. So. We're going to need a chair for him. Yeah, we got Just Next, we have the uh, swearing in, in of uh, staff and members of the audience by Mr. Henderson. Um, if you're going to give any testimony this evening, if you would please stand and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you give this evening will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, under penalty of perjury? Say, I do. May be seated. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Mr. Aguilar just made it into the meeting. We were all present and accounted for. Yeah. Let's see, where are we now here? If I could have a motion for the uh, approval of the tonight's agenda, if anybody has any changes or questions, please bring them forth. I make a motion to approve the Tuesday, October 24th uh, Planning and Zoning Commission agenda. Second. Second. <laughs> Got to be quick. We have a motion by Jana and a second by Jesse to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. All everybody's in favor. Next, we have the approval of the minutes from the September 26th, 2023 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Uh, I noticed on my notes that uh, Richard and Saul were not at this meeting, so they're not allowed to participate in the vote. Um, does anybody have any changes to the minutes from last month's meeting? If not, I'd accept a motion. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion by Jesse and a second by Steve to approve the minutes from the September 26th meeting. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Move that off. Next, we have our public hearing item. The only one on our agenda tonight is case 23011 uh, CUP request for a conditional use permit for major home occupation. To operate an in-home child care for up to 12 children in the R1 residential zoning district. Um, could we have a motion to waive the reading of the findings of facts in the land use and zoning considerations, please? So moved. Second. 
We have a motion by Jenna and a second by Steve to waive the reading of the finding and facts in the land use and zoning considerations for case 23011. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. That passes. Next, we have uh, Miss Meredith Hildreth to present the case to us. Good evening, Chair Story Commissioners. Thank you for being here today. We only have one case tonight. And it is a request for a major home occupation, a conditional use permit for a major home occupation for a child care in-home child care for up to 12 children at 302 South Evergreen Avenue. And the applicant is in the audience. So this is the home uh, photo by the homeowner showing the residence at 302 South Evergreen Avenue, showing a 21 foot wide by 40 foot long driveway from the house to the back of sidewalk. So there's there's ample parking in the drive for the, the two car, I guess they have two cars and uh, anyone dropping off or picking up children. This is in the R1 zoning district, surrounded by R1. And as of today's date, uh, the Planning and Zoning Division has received zero protests and zero inquiries. <clears throat> On this zoning case, the, the applicant is already running a a child care is a permitted use by right up to six children and they already have a waiting list they just recently opened this child care center and it was their goal to have up to 12. and staff uh, recommends approval of the zoning case So I stand for questions. Lewis and James stand for questions as well. Commissioners, any questions of Meredith? No. Or, no. I've already cut and dry. I had a couple of questions. I was, I was just curious. Um, <laughs> the daycare in operation is licensed with the state, with the CYFD uh, for up to six kids now. Um, okay, that's correct. And how many staff members do you? you have there the 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 owner can come up and speak and answer any questions you might sure. have yeah if we could i was just curious about the yeah the 12 kids so i currently am the ma'am if you could please give us your name and address please for the record yes my name is sarah Verano. Um, my address is 302 south evergreen um i'm currently the only employee working um, we are in the process of hiring somebody else, um, but according to the state standards for my licensing, I'm only one that's required to work. Once I reach the occupancy of seven, then I have to hire somebody. Yeah, so yes. it, it's one staff per six children. Correct. And so then uh, how many residents are in, in the home right now? Currently, I have only four. Um, no, how, how many people live, live Oh, in the live house? in there, um, including my children? Yeah. So it's me, my husband, and then I have three children. And then you'll need one more staff staff person. Correct. Okay. Uh, so I, I think that the the uh, ordinance was the residence plus one employee, right? And, and you feel like there's ample parking off street for for all of that. That's correct, Chair Story Commissioner Holman. Yes, uh, for a major home occupation. Besides the people who live in the home, they can employ one employee. Okay. Right. So then it would just be limited to the to the twelve, and, and that's it. correct. Okay. I just wanted to clarify. Thanks. Yes. Yes. Of course. Anything else, ma'am, you'd like to say or? No, I just hope to get this approval. I do have a waiting list currently. Um, the waiting list does consist of mostly siblings, 
So it's a lot of after school care that I would mainly have children for, but I also have requests for infants in the morning and stuff like that. And I do have a lot of support from my neighbors, which is great. So Commissioners, any any questions of the applicant? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience wishing to speak in faith in favor of case 23011? Anyone in the audience against case 23001? Being none, Lewis, James, you guys got any comments or questions? Or Mr. Chairman, I have uh, a couple of comments. One will to support Mr. Holman's question. Uh, we've had similar, those of you who have been around, we've had similar uh, requests for daycares, and they come to us when it goes up to 12. I do know that being familiar with owners of other daycares, there's a big need in Roswell for daycares, especially the younger kids. And I know some parents feel more comfortable at a smaller, I'm gonna say home style daycare than taking them to a bigger one. But from an engineering point of view, we've seen similar sizes up to 12, similar size lots, similar size parking. So from an engineering point of view, it has not proven to be a problem. Because the parents usually just drop them off at various times, pick them up at various times. And then what I see is the need for the community. We need this type of service. I have a question to staff. Um, I know we, we've seen this many times before. We've seen these many times before. And have you have y'all received any? And every now and then we get some opposition, you know. But have y'all heard or complaints or any neighbors saying there's so many cars driving by, there's too much traffic, or other ones that we've done in the past? Yeah, we have had some complaints, and they usually show up at these kind of hearings. And the commission has passed it. Um, I'm referring after it's after been passed. After, no, after, after it's been passed. Well, that, so, commissioners, uh, Aguilar, we have had protests when, when they this come this, and then afterwards we follow up on it. You know, do I do drive-bys and that kind of stuff on the traffic, and we have never had any any complaints afterwards from the, those neighbors that were there to protest. That was, that was kind of my feeling, and I just wanted to see if you have heard anything after. No, because, no, I mean, I forgot. There's another one over there in the Tree Street that I was watching, mm -hmm. and then there was some protest on the Kittles number 2 on Union and McGaffey, yeah. and kept an eye on that one, and now once they got, they're operating, and as I understand, they're all full and and still doing good business. Yeah, yeah no, I fully support that, because, I mean, just what you said, they need more of it. And we'll probably have another case, a special use case, next month on another daycare in an, industri in an industrial area. That is all for me. Any other questions, commissioners, of anybody? If none, I would accept a motion, please. Do we need to state the motion, Meredith, along with all the findings and facts? Yeah, you got to get. Yeah, move to approve case 23011. Second. Is that sufficient, or would you like us to include based? Top of the page, page, yeah. page three of the top. At the top, they want you to read all that garbage. Okay, based on land use and zoning consideration, finding the fact is uh, motion 23011CUP, uh, conclusions of law list, nothing surrounding land uses, regulations established in zoning ordinance staff recommendations, material presented, and testimony received. Commissioner Coleman motion. Uh, Approves on case 23011 CUP. Seconded by Mr. McDaniel. Mr. McDaniel. And I would I might add to that to that motion that the uh, findings of facts and land use and zoning considerations uh, should include one through six. Items one through six there.
under Exhibit B, number five, finding the facts, conclusions, law, numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six to be included in the motion. Is that okay with you, Mr. Yep. Holman? Okay. Yes. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by, oh, I guess we, I should say we have a motion. Huh? We have a motion by Greg and a, and a second by Jesse to approve case number 23-011. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. It's, it's passed. Good luck. You're welcome. Thank you, commissioners. I just want to give you a quick report on the conference that was held last week. Yes, sir. Excuse me a minute. On my motion, we don't, that's not. No. Okay. That Carry was, on. Uh, oops. <laughs> and there were other business. Meredith? So last week, we had the American Planning Association New Mexico chapter annual conference right here in Roswell, New Mexico, with over 70, with 70, about 70 registrations, over 50 speakers, 26 educational sessions, two plenary luncheons with keynotes, two receptions, a session at the Dr. Robert H. Goddard Planetarium, a session at the NMMI Pearson Auditorium, a tour of the NMMI with Goss Rifle Team Performance and Corps of Cadets March By, Friday morning on Main Street, Roswell, and a wildlife safari mobile tour to Spring River Zoo and Bitter Lake National Wildlife Refuge. That is our schedule, as you can see, and Bruce Stubbs gave a great talk at the planetarium, and I'm hoping that we can do that again because I also showed a film on a dark sky conservation district in Maine that I found on PBS, which supported what Bruce was saying. The lights over the last three years with all the LEDs has just really lit up the dark skies. And it's very, he has to travel a really long way from Roswell and you can still see the glow 20 miles away. It's, it's gotten, it's increased substantially over the last three years. So, how much light is enough? And then also Jeremy Howe showed a six minute film on light pollution on the full dome. It was really fun. A great experience for our guests. We had two plenary keynote speakers on Wednesday, Michelle Miano, the division director of the environmental protection division with environment department spoke and on Thursday cabinet secretary Sarah Cotrell Probst spoke uh, she is the cabinet secretary of the energy minerals and natural resources department and that was so great to have both of them talk about what New Mexico is doing as a leader in climate strategies and how these two departments are co-chairing the climate uh, task force for the state. And that's it. Well, thank you, Meredith. Everything I saw on Facebook and everything else was highly complimentary of the whole thing. So good job. Thank uh, you. I actually attended the uh, the Night Sky presentation in, in, in that part of the conference. It was very well done. The whole conference was presented very well. And it was um, really concerning what what Mr. Stubbs talked about with the the uh, the night sky and and the brightness that uh, he's experiencing, and I think he was he had pictures of 40 miles outside of of Roswell, north of Roswell, and was having really everything everything lower than about 30 degrees in the sky was completely washed out, so you couldn't see any of the night sky until you got above the uh, the ambient lighting, and he had pictures showing. The glow from Roswell at 40 miles out, which was substantial, and then he could also pick up Albuquerque and Santa Fe uh, from that location as well. So, 
And this is good information, but a little bit scary. Hmm. And I'd like to thank Terry with the Roswell Daily Record, who's present with us tonight, also for the two articles in the Roswell Daily Record pre conference and post conference. So thank you. Are there any public comments? You know, there's no public. I guess there's no, public, no comments coming. Any announcements? Any adjournment? 6.20 and we are adjourned. That wasn't really fair for his first meeting. That was way too easy. It's way too easy. <laughs>